there's a point whereby you need to move from the potential of becoming the chances of becoming to actually becoming mm-hmm. about regasere hey, you stand a chance of being the next top star hey, turn to move from standing to be and actually being the Ooh. next top star about so sometimes potentially it doesn't mean ability oh. history tradition and culture don't say women must be in the kitchen they yeah. say women were found in the kitchen men were found hunting so meaning they were compatible in a sense yahore what the man works hard for the woman now process it in the same effort of hardness okay therefore it's compatibility mm. okay. but That's when why i said to... that i love you feeling is not enough to keep the till death do us part commitment yeah. because ew, it will come with family rohan mm. will you love them i get when or family rohan how are you gonna Langana Premium Gin. This collaboration is ignited to create the perfect celebration of two African entities that are on different journeys with the same destination. Taste the gin that speaks to the authenticity of its roots while listening to a podcast that is true to its surroundings. Indulge in a carefully handmade gin with 18 botanicals with Langana being the signature botanical. With every sip, you will get an aromatic note of lingana, which are uniquely light and married with a refreshing citrus taste. Here is to the beauty of African heritage and the pursuit. Standing by. Yeah, man. What's up, Buja? Welcome to another episode of Culture Spotlight. My name is Montes Kosana. And we're coming to you live from absolutely nowhere. <laughs> and today, we're hanging out with a man that almost does it all. Teboho Sweats. I don't know where you get that name. A radio personality, <laughs> a voiceover artist, entrepreneur, a life coach. Yeah. Public speaker. Definitely. What else would you do? DJ. A graphics designer. <laughs> graphics designer. <laughs> Photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Public speaker. Yeah. Hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Sweats. My G. How's it? Ah, get grand okay. No No sweat at heart, man. No grand uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, not really. Actually, uh, sweat. It's my surname, and you're actually one of the few people who gets it right. What? <laughs> yeah. People because say what? Sweet. Sweat. Keep a falling. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but nobody works cool is getting it right. No. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, Sweats is my surname translated to English. Um, what do you look at? Uh, Tsonga Munyuku. Munyuku. Sweats. Oh, oh. Exactly. I was having a hard time <laughs> saying hey, that surname. Yeah, hey. Like, right, you like it's a Munyuku. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a, it's a Tsonga guy here. So, Sorry. I just changed it to make it cool, you know. And oh. also to make it a brand per se. Oh, so you think when you go one way? Again. No, it, it works. But I'm one person. I'm of the view that you need to be unique, Obo. So oh, that's yeah. why I changed it to sound cool because I'm a cool guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> and also, yeah. besides, it's a hard surname to say because like hey, I was nyoko. pronouncing. I was like, mm. nah. <laughs> yeah, no. And but, I was not getting it right. Nah. Yeah, but as you get to know me, you you actually find it easy to pronounce it. Is it? Yeah. So okay. actually, many people prefer that compared to sweats. But I love yeah. sweats because it's it's a brand on its own and it's unique. I yeah. think it's I'm the only one in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Who's called sweats? Yeah, you, you'll find both Keith sweat, the both sweat, but sweats. It's actually one of a kind. I thought maybe you grew up sweating a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know those guys who have sweaty uh, hands and whatnot. Yeah. yeah ah, but no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, actually, I'm one of uh, those who struggle to sweat. Actually, struggle to sweat. Yeah, I can I can do hard labor for the longest of time. Mar eh, hey, it's 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 it took it takes a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. But anyway, as a radio presenter, dog, mm-hmm. I know like you never get like interviewed a lot. Yeah. So as a radio presenter, like, what is the one question like you wanted to be asked like your entire life and never got the opportunity to be asked? 
<laughs> okay, I think it's the question would be how do you do it? But then people shouldn't ask because I don't know how <laughs> to answer <laughs> that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I, I, the question you've always wanted to answer but never got asked. Uh are you coping? <laughs> That's sure, the I'm question. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 really hard, but hey, you know, we are trying, man. But yeah, no, honestly, I'm I'm coping, yeah. Because uh I I appreciate the decisions that I make. So with that being said, everything that I'm doing, um, <clears throat> I find it easy to cope because I'm passionate about it. Elaborate. Like okay. Uh and what are you going through, Nakon? Ne, okay, I'm one person you need to do what you are passionate about. That's yeah. in doing what you love instead okay. of loving what you do. Okay. So everything within what I do, I'm very passionate about it. So that's why I do it out of love, not as an obligation. Okay. So that's why I'm, I'm coping pretty well. You know, <laughs> yeah, one <laughs> challenges like Saka, uh, it's in as I expected, but for effect, it brings some form of fulfillment. I'm coping just fine. Uh, okay, the thing is, not everyone understands the importance of certain things. Okay. Like having a life coach, getting a professional photographer, yeah. you know, getting a public speaker for your event, getting yeah. an MC, you know, yeah. uh, getting a professional DJ. People just want to do So yeah. when you come as Sweats, or uh, I can help you become better at what you do in life i can be your life coach they're like <laughs> and so that's why I get it. it's it's really hard getting the right people who oh, understands yeah, yeah. About yeah yeah so what's a life coach okay uh Mirang particularly a life coach is, is an individual who helps people unleash their potential maximize on their talents and skills so it's like in the in the soccer field Everyone knows how to play soccer, but okay. a coach directs us to which skill must be placed where in order to meet oh. a certain goal. Yeah. So as a life coach, my duty is to, you know, make you understand all your gifts, all your talents, and you channel them right so that you are not misplaced or you don't malfunction. Oh, that's what, yeah. makes sense, makes sense. The reason why sometimes you find software is like on a certain PC guru, you find horror, the PC is not compatible with that software. Oh. So even with life coaching, it's helping people understand horror. Sometimes you might love to do something, but you find horror, you are not compatible in doing that. So therefore you should do what is beyond your capabilities. So wouldn't you, Anger, you started out saying passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So someone might be passionate in something, but uh, the whatever is not compatible. So how do you deal with such situations? It's, you know, part of being a life coach, it's helping people make peace with what they cannot do. Exactly. So <laughs> the thing is not telling Motohore Daman Asha Pufoena, but it's actually showing the person who they truly are and yeah. they will understand Hore. No, Mara na I'm a square. Even if in Galolo Tana on a space yeah triangle and gas it's a oh, yeah. so yeah, the trick in what we do is actually showing people their true capabilities so that bakono understand so that's that's the whole point instead of just showing someone who are when i'm metal of it monster when are you a creative who cannot draw when are you a speak or cannot play so yeah that's that because when you want to overcome a system instead of trying to fight the system introduce a system that you feel or it's better Okay. Yeah. The reason why most political parties they fail, they are trying so hard to fight the, the, the ruling party instead of showing people their full capabilities as a certain party. Mm. So oh, it's when you say most, which political parties are we talking about? Yeah, you know those other ones, the blue, the white, <laughs> the one that doesn't have the black color on their logo, you know. The, the the ones the red ends you name them you know the one that represents the colors and they are men <laughs> but also speaking of life coaching mm -hmm. so what do you think is like the most common thing that you always find 
and the people that you life coach? Uh, people don't know who they are. So, Parkimang, Tandiso Mazai was right. Yeah. Is it that song? Yeah. We, yeah, we, we are trying so hard to fit into so many things. And the Lozo di Feletza di Altara, who we truly are. Yeah. It's like someone who has a relationship. I'll use relationship as a reference because people are going to go to the You find a whole. On a little lady. Because I wait a whole when I prefer a little bit. Yeah. I wait a love language. How? Whatever the person. And it's something that has always been practiced. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, Neresna Neresa is the term. Oh yeah. I didn't know her. I could do something called life coaching, but I also yeah. knew her. Okay, I'm good with advising people, helping people discover their talents. Yeah. So the common thing you get around go her. I read to her. Nagle sweats ke man ke kona. And to which extent can I do it? So therefore, it will be easy for me to try and do the lots of buy. Ke zama hunyaga en nage kona. But if nga toma naga nyaga hore ke man ki prefera di lots of what is beyond my means? What is beyond my capabilities? What I like? Sometimes a relega who kuka di lots of long hore they are three times greater than our weight. That's why the fellas are their pressure down. What I like? You are fighting so hard to become a lawyer, marawena. It's not within your capabilities to talk and represent people. So yeah. if a letter you rang, you wear down. What like? You are trying so hard to be a media personality. Marakamo, you are shy. Moharabat. <laughs> so if a letter you rang, over depressed, you have to pretend the more people are Or when you are happy and then how fit you are in you cry. Because yeah. it's overwhelming. Everyone wants you to interact. And when I go when I go, now I'm not at all. I'll keep a conversation going. So all fit. Well, then jiggy jiggy. But our celebrities going through depression is on antidepressants. But isn't that like the most common thing that is happening with each, which with mm. each and every celeb currently? They are always feeling overwhelmed. Even the babang bag they never to ask. Yeah. Cause how? So are you saying most of them literally don't know how exactly give them but like life coaching yeah if you can look even our social uh, media influencers our tiktok stars they yeah. get into acting simply because an opportunity came not yeah. because moto o passionate they got acting it's okay for moto abe passionate they got wina lo bolela whatever behind the phone but when it comes to the screen it's a different ball game because there are we one little phone now. You have a director. You have someone who will tell you what you're doing is nonsense. And then because Omar you can't actually cry. Why surprise? Kausa niki shoot the hub. Why surprise? About what's a nonsense or go practice your lines. This is not primary school. Why surprise? So off it lay the atalala na we know what and then uh, remember you try to Sleep and then those thoughts are diabo. Or a mara director on put it to chill like a jin. A mara question nela with in ele hard. Then your mind is awake. Au kono roba. That's when you find the sleeping pills. See, so those things are the daily problem. It is suppressed. Eventually, to a point whereby you can't actually suppress it anymore. It's what we call now depression. You can't cope with everything. Mm. It's a. It's. Let me take Let's it all see. in. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, I have a I have a quick question yeah. to ask. Regarding you saying you should do something that you're passionate about, right? Yeah. So let's say growing up I didn't know like what I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. And then as time goes, people just tell me, oh my God, you have a nice voice. You have a voice for radio. Mm -hmm. I see you presenting and all that, your energy and all that. Yeah. And you start like that thing starts ringing in your head and then you end up pursuing it. Can we call that a passion? No, remember everyone will advise you based on how they perceive you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, because we've had two conversations, you're a bubbly person. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were bubbly only for that moment. Maybe you were to get it. Or maybe you were just happy at that moment. Or mm. no, you're a quiet person. So therefore, you just don't feel like being with someone. And then everybody, you are a quiet person in nature. Then you pursuing that without knowing and being honest with yourself. 
it's what will lead to you now being confused or okay these people but i can sing and i wait for no ropa ki ekoya shower what hello hi no ropa go hore na kwela no sa opele mo mike yeah mike now we amplify a voice how and we realize or ah the notes with your wet yeah so therefore your passion you find it in the things that you can easily do without even complain without even struggling that much something say lord if we can even wake you up at night and say bona i need you to draft the contract for me you gonna straight up do it uh bona they need a singer somewhere you don't need to rehearse like now no with voice overs i i i can do a voice over girl modikobo and then submit go clicks by air just like that because it doesn't take much for me i've discovered the horror i'm passionate with using my voice to portray certain messages mm-hmm. so most people were like hey when are you can say but no i can't sing i'm good at mimicking sounds yeah but if i pursue what people say i can do guess i eat it and i guess i be honest the lower what i can do you don't know what so what if what they saying that you can do is actually something that you have the potential to do it uh okay with potential potential has a due date okay so there's a point whereby you need to move from the potential of becoming the chances of becoming to actually becoming mhm about regasere hey you stand a chance of being the next top star i turn to move from standing to be and actually being the next top star about so sometimes potentially it doesn't mean ability potentially could actually mean that you're just finding a chance to do it but can you sustain it to a point whereby you are no longer having potential but you are actually becoming mm. okay or sometimes you can have potential for over five years <laughs> hey, yeah. you stand to be the next big presenter mm. oh, I, must, I must i must i must graduate mm. i must graduate and actually become right. well, yeah so sometimes you need to look at how can you sustain your potential is it something that you'll be able to take into your future as a parent whatever you have potential of will you sustain it because mm. baba nwe uh baba to tala tala ba be celebrity mara ga mo ba re they are family oriented will you manage the responsibilities of being a mother a wife and also being an mc who's invited to speak and coordinate events everywhere mm. so another thing beyond our love it's a reality what is your life setup looking like in the future what do you want mm. and then you'll realize oh, i know this one you can't actually go far with it yes i have potential but i won't be able to sustain it one of the statements i wrote mabane hore that i love you feeling is not enough to sustain the till death do us apart mm. commitment mm. so even with what you love you can love it but can you sustain it till the point of death mm. So are we saying people in the entertainment or whatever mm-hmm. are primarily not capable of having a stable family? They are, they are capable but uh the industry suggests otherwise. <laughs> it does. Honestly yeah. speaking it the does. The industry suggests otherwise. Mm. Trust me okay i'm a youth past at my church okay so therefore that's why even with being a dj i'm not uh a vibe kind of a dj okay i'm a soul and r&b dj oh, yeah. because i prefer being in a relaxed mood and you know with soul we only play on sundays only that's it <laughs> but like any other day i need to be constantly maybe studying the word preparing material engaging yeah. with people who need life coaching if i am to say i want to be an ama piano or vibe dj it means friday saturday i need to be at a gig i need to be booked somewhere mm-hmm. even with mc i'm selective on the events that i mc okay. so certain things you need to understand that if you get into them are you going to be able to sustain them so therefore if you decide to be someone I- into an industry that requires you more okay. it means you must be there more so you need to choose between being family orientated or being career orientated okay. mm. the balance is in you being honest with yourself to say if i'm gonna be a music producer whereby i need to produce every single day of my life can i be able to also have time for family that's why you find some of the greatest producers both kido it's not that they are not good musically but they were honest enough to say i'm good at producing and yeah. producing doesn't need me to always be on the stage 
doesn't yeah. need me to always you know sing somewhere so that's where the balance is mm. so even with you know what you do in a certain industry you need to be honest to say uh Mara, this one is gonna contradict these certain values so the reason why i said people don't know who they are it also comes to values we don't know what our values are we mm. just do Nje. we just vibing in this life <laughs> we are we are flowy Mm. As long as Moyo Salena me, says all look over pay, but actually, says all look over, all be productive, mobile pillow. Because I also wanted to ask, like, mm-hmm. like what is the one thing you feel like people need to understand more of, mm-hmm. like, generally, in life or in relationships themselves. You feel like they need to understand themselves, exactly, a because, little bit more. Yeah, because if you understand your capabilities you better understand how you function in certain fields like i know myself so yeah. therefore i know that in a setup where i have to talk that's what i'm gonna be good at so if it comes to a relationship i'll even bring my advices into my own relationship <laughs> if it comes to you know being in with a group of people the content that i'll be giving has to be inspirational so therefore yeah. if you can know your capabilities you know how best to use yourself in everything in life so the biggest problem we face in life is that people don't know who they are so therefore whatever they do they are trying to find themselves in what they do instead of them fitting in what they do you know we are taking any shape you know it's according to a science is this a shape shifter but i like if 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 you get into a square glass you try to become a square mm. if you get into a rectangular glass you try to become that but if you can you know and it comes it doesn't come easy deciding to say now nah, i'm this i am not that trust me it doesn't come easy but what's worth it is that you'll be fulfilled knowing that you are doing exactly what fulfills you but are you suggesting that people are just squares and triangles and circles in j they can never be multiple things you can actually be depending on how long you want to keep that up at some point i was i was i was a forex trader but i couldn't sustain it because my spending habits were just reckless Mm. so i couldn't sustain that part and i couldn't live for long being that Okay. at some point i was very active as a graphic designer okay. but because i actually tried to shift into something else i ended up compromising that which i was doing so in you trying to become something else as you go in life also age and experience will be the limit you can you can you can try every career for the next coming 30 years at some point you need to be stable and like I said, making peace with the fact that you are this, you are not that. Even if it's nice, <laughs> you need to make peace with the fact that, okay, I know I'm doing a lot of things, but Zakayantwe Nkasa Kono who it's here anymore because he has a horrible compromise this other thing. So Pila Pila specialization is the way to Exactly. Work. Exactly. So someone needs to just do one thing. Yeah, you need to find that one thing that you are good at and then yeah. eventually it will help you to branch out into other things so if you can find that like if we can talk about certain individuals if i can mention mike tyson what comes to your mind boxing, boxing. if yeah. i can mention nelson mandela what comes to your mind politics if i can mention dr miles monroe yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly there's actually one way that comes into your mind so that's specialization you know Aye. yeah meaning your efforts are directed into a specific thing but now i have an issue because now you're telling us this thing and you are doing something completely different so really you know okay with me what i'm well versed in that's why if there's one way or maybe three ways that you can identify me by its personal development so in every single thing that i do it has to do with personal development now let me break it down with me Mm-hmm. in terms of photography mm. it's personal development in a sense that i'm maximizing on my skill of being good with an eye you know being able to identify a good picture being able to identify good moments okay. everything that i do it's actually for me what most people don't know 
Okay. It's actually for me. It's okay. my personal development. That's why I'm saying I'm doing what I'm passionate about. Okay. It's me developing myself in that specific field. And with that being said, 90% of the things that I do benefit more, me more, more than they benefit someone else. But still, I'm sure when are you saying uh, people need to be, they need to check. Specialize. So yeah. check, uh, but choose a shape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically what they say. They should not try to be squares, <laughs> rectangles and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But it seems like with you, you're trying to be all these shapes. Okay. With all that you do, there must be something that you can compromise all these other things for. And with me, it's life coaching. Okay. So I can leave a gig for speaking. I can leave gigi out later just for someone who says, I need your advice. Okay. So are you saying now some of these things, you just do them to survive? Definitely. Whenever life coaching doesn't work out. Like, no, no. It's really. like, yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> because the other thing with, uh, I think with specialization, mm-hmm. I think with most people fear, it's one like, hey, but why do you like, mm-hmm. Raubon or Konopel, but yeah. at least they are schooling so that you have backup. Mm-hmm. So it always comes to mind, especially maybe, I don't know, with white kids, I'll speak with people that I know, I know. as yeah. black kids, yeah. that we always need backup, yeah, backup, yeah, backup. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. should not this thing not work out? I need to have a backup for this. And mm-hmm. I think ultimately that's why we try to fit into all these other things because we need backups for backups. And a backup for another backup because yeah. then you studied law after law you're studying something else you're studying now you're becoming all these shapes so mm-hmm. with you is that the case also or it's just maybe who papa maybe Laura and then you're like oh, i'm gonna do it and because also you have the connections to do it also okay with me it's like in uh medical school Mm-hmm. They teach you all these other subjects. You yeah. find that, well, you know them. And then when you want to specialize and not be a GP, there's yeah. a certain, you know, subject that you focus on being well-versed in. Yeah. So that's what you're going to specialize in. So the reason why we are able to do so many things for the sake of backup is that we are not actually taught to invest into one thing and see it through. So meaning our plan A, already we don't believe in it. Mm. So that's why I'm saying most of what I do, they work for me more than they work for someone else. Because in my skill as a graphic designer, I design my own material for my life coaching course. Yeah. In my skill as a public speaker, I, you know, design my own captions for advertising and posts. In my skill as a photographer, I take this, this, the, the pictures that I want to use in my materials. I'm able to notice the right pictures that I use in my materials. Right. In my skill as a radio personality, I use that platform to actually advertise my services. Okay. So hence I'm saying in all those things that I do, they all are directed into making this one thing work Mm -hmm. get my point so the problem is we are not actually taught into putting our eggs in one basket and then protecting that basket no yeah yeah, yeah, you get it yeah so it's 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 about everything that you do you need to find that one thing that which you are you have so much faith in it even if certain seasons it might not work but you are still saying this is what i want to do okay so let's get into the radio presenting. Yeah. How do we get into that? How did I start? I think we should get into that. that like, okay. That, I think it's one and the same question. <laughs> yeah. Or me. Nyakaku rephrases. Okay. How did you start? And how did we get into that? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I used to, growing up, I used to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I used to listen to the radio station I'm currently working at, MCRFM. Yeah. yeah. So a part of me wanted to be there, but I wasn't really. I was like, ah, it will happen. Then uh, there was a point where I was presenting my pastor's show back in 2017. Yeah. So before he would come and preach on the on the church slot, I would you know present before and then have a conversation with him. So. Eventually, there was this other guy who invited me to say, I need you to come and uh, speak at my show, share mm-hmm. your content. Then the guy was like, since can't you find someone who will assist me? Because I right. one person who can assist you. Rude. <laughs> you know, so mm. he arranged someone who was going to teach me. The person I was shadowing him for a period of a year, which was in 2018. 
then yeah. eventually the guy was like please handle the show yeah yeah i started handling it and then that there was when the station management noticed me and they're like we're gonna try you with another show yeah. because you've been here for long and even though you were not official but you've been here then that's when they started giving me a uh, midnight show but get grieve yet she yeah <laughs> uh, i never felt the grieve yet she because <laughs> they are just speaking and playing around with music i enjoyed that yeah so that's how i eventually mastered uh the art of radio presenting i did your reggae shows i did your gospel shows your soul music shows your yeah. youth show yeah you name them so that's when how i became diverse in this radio thing also you've been doing it for what since 2018 it's what now 2020 plus minus 15, 15 years. years yeah close to that close oh, oh it must be nice eh? yeah and then does it play well though because uh, every time radio presenters are crying hey it's colors money you okay and now i would say it doesn't play well but i'm still there because i'm passionate yeah, yeah. Get passionate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's the honest truth. If it wasn't for passion, yo, yeah. okay, I remember this year. Uh, yeah. I didn't comply with the full skill. Yeah, I didn't comply with the music sheet. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I said, I'm going to bench. Oh, yeah. I'm hey, I was discouraged. I was like, I'm Ah, trust me, every Sunday morning I would go and do the show. <laughs> what do you, so what does benching mean i thought when about benching that you don't do the show yeah you don't do the show but mina there was this uh specific show yes sunday the one i started on oh yeah yeah so i kept going there and doing the show also you have your during the week shows uh no i my my show is on saturdays i do saturday show and sunday show okay yeah so they benched you for the saturday for the show. saturday show but you still continue yeah i still the continue the sunday show oh. yeah because what i do is hey, every show that i do <laughs> i i brand it on its own oh yeah, oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't actually become a footnote yeah like the show that i was hosting the ymk show yeah it, it was derived from my ngo young minds connect okay yeah so it was that's why even after i was benched the show was done on saturdays yeah about it it took a different head it was now called youth in touch which is what i'm doing now okay. so i brand things individually so that even beyond radio i can still push them mm -hmm. so that's what i was doing even with the sunday show it, it was like a standalone brand yeah. you know, not a footnote of the radio so that's how I, I i managed to you know stay through because even after i was benched i would still go on the page at the ymk show uh, share some content uh, do some live videos and then that's uh, just to keep it alive because it was more than just the radio show it was actually a, a concept oh yeah but speaking on branding mm -hmm. like i see like you're big on branding yeah like how 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 important or how big is the way you look because i see mostly on your social media you yeah ship and shop yeah yeah is this guy very sweating in this suit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. how how big would you say branding is and uh, not branding man how how big would you say the your image and your look mm -hmm. is in terms of branding uh it comes from being identifiable okay you know in a sense that when people see a certain theme Mm -hmm. you must cross their mind okay yeah when people see a certain kind of a style there was a point where i used to style gentlemen i used to call it sweat styles mm -hmm. you know formal wear and all of that so during conferences that east i go church it up they get the i was going saga background formally over river nice so it's it's about you know being identifiable so that when we look at a certain angle we can see her ah uh, that is where it's that yeah oh, well. so hence even with what happened the past two weeks and then i realized the oh, horror it doesn't work for my brand because people are used to this neat look oh, well. even though they enjoy every day every morning oh, well. but 
because I had to be somewhere and they know this certain image, mm-hmm. I had to be that. Doesn't Allah. it become exhausting? It does, but remember, you, you signed up for it. <laughs> mm. That's what I'm saying. With everything that you do, you need to go big or go home. Go all in, not half measure. But then you'd have like your uh, DJ Swu who also went through his... Yeah, what DJ Swu did, he rebranded. Okay. Yeah, that's why he went from Shapadi Katitzela yeah. to now Shapini Dreadlocks. Mm. That was, yeah, rebranding. Otherwise, yeah. if it was not, Nayor Kate are the Dreadzenya Arakate. So, because he took a whole different look, even Le Kam Kwapara. Yeah. You can see or asa para di di suitu zela wabo. Yeah. So that is rebranding, meaning okay. he's now taking this image that is identifiable. Now, mm-hmm. if you can see anyone kadi dress a lenche we outsana lehi, we put zogar ever gizbu or we inspire gizbu. Yeah. Remember the toko mudi say haircut. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That is branding. Yeah. You get to have things named after you. Trust yeah. me, in the Christian community, Hamanskra at some point the majita go church heba pere formali. Never eh sort styles. Yeah. Like, because I also normally did not tie head yeah. it. So I would use that to give a tiny lapel chain. So that's branding what it does. Yeah. People are able to identify and say, Oh, that man who inspire again, mama mama. And that's how you also grow your yeah. brand. Lapel chain king. Uh, you know this change is the desert apparanza. Oh gotta be so outdated. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> part home. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> The chains that they wear, like on the suits, just like to bling no. it up. Yeah. Oh, you know, chain. Yeah. Oh, I know. I see them. I don't know what they call. Ne, oh yeah, that's my God. Call <laughs> <them> <laughs> <laughs> you should oh. start wearing them. Yeah. So based on <laughs> such styles and suits, so. well, yeah, I want to get top black, top black. So based on Lena, I've rebranded in a way okay. to now being casual. Oh yeah, yeah. Based on because the time I was doing so much formal. Can I go negle? Muruti Ruti. You know, I was leading a church also called Mabopan, called Hebron. So oh. there was then the image, what I was doing, the industry suggested, <laughs> as I'm saying. Oh. So, oh. so now moving into different industries, yeah. I was like, no, I need to, because Nedion Kosa Hore, Leheko MC, I need to be formal. Leheko Tala Sam, I need to be formal. So yeah. I rebranded into this casual look. But as far as your hairstyle is concerned, Libu Niti, I had to keep consistency. Mm. You get my point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I had to, because then I saw, I was going through, like, when I was doing my preps, I went through yeah. your social media. I was like, okay, let me see this, bro. Yeah. Hey, talk a lot. Hey, <laughs> hey. hey Facebook, you play Grand Dow. Hey. hey, yeah, no. Hey. <laughs> but then I saw, you saw uh you were sharing a picture yeah painting tool yeah and then you were speaking about people wearing a certain kind of revealing clothing yeah and i just wanted to get your thoughts on that like mm-hmm. i think she was wearing revealing clothing so it's, costume yeah. Kind of yeah. And, uh, yeah and you're like I, at some age of it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it, it, it's it's age and also i mentioned on that post story body stretch what you mean? <laughs> okay, if you're a plus size model, yeah. the industry suggests. Mm-hmm. But if you are not, there's nothing that professionally says you should. So in as much as you want to do for the fun of it, okay. you need to understand, Hore, hey, people are not going to sympathize with you. <laughs> what you mean? And that's why most people found it disgusting. But if they you did. Can, yeah. But if you can look at any... Then they look so good, those pictures. Like, in as much as, okay, they are revealing. No, it's like a review once for me. Yeah, it's like a review once. That's it. What the Lord? They, they shouldn't have reached the, the social media shows. <laughs> Just like there was the, a recent story of a certain lady pastor on her 40th birthday. Yeah. She wore this dress that exposed cleavage. Okay. And oh, you, you saw, yeah, and it. it <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so it, it, gave, it received a lot of criticism because yeah. her career field, her being a pastor, suggests yeah. otherwise. I think Barangaroo, we're now living in an era where we're trying to break those suggestions. Especially I, because also 
there was a time where maybe plus size models were not allowed to wear mm-hmm. certain kinds of clothes, yeah. especially revealing clothes. Yeah. And then people went out to bro- to break those suggestions. Mm-hmm. Uh, certain kind of body structure was not allowed to do certain things yeah. and the ramp to walk ramps and whatnot. So I guess we're living in a time where people are trying to break suggestions, especially what to work yeah. You see now artists going into the spaces of trying to uh, put Jesus on crosses in music videos and yeah. doing all certain kinds of things. Mm. Don't you think like this is what people are trying to do also in, the, in their own spaces? Yeah. Yeah, what we are trying to do in that case is we are trying to break the concept of originality. You know, we are actually trying to dilute also history. Remember, history also suggests uh, how things should be. The moment we try to configure them, we are actually bringing a disorder of some sort. Remember, everything has its place and we should put it in its place. It's like now when you have a hoodie label, Mama Zalara Pagaladi or Drub, we it's already the Kosuli and the Wedding Nagamo, the Hembe Uribiamo. Now, when you try to change all those things, you misplace things. You'll find the Hore, Omenedi Hembu, the Lady and the Wedding Kos, and of which those things don't serve the same purpose. So, therefore, even the pressure they receive, it's not the same. The kind of debt that you find on a shirt is not the same that you find on a sock. Because they are exposed to different environments. So even with us trying to break those suggestions, we are trying to mix things up and therefore everything if it's ever misplaced. That's what I'm saying with revealing clothes. Yes, modeling even our category as swimwear. Mm. The profession suggests that. Mm. But you can't just decide to uh, maybe wear a revealing thing as, as as a pastor because you are now tainting the image that suggests Hore as pastors you should be in this way. So mm-hmm. therefore that's what I'm saying we are misplacing things and often let's hope like chaos. Mm-hmm. But also that goes back Pela Happy there's the mm-hmm. woman should be in the kitchen chat. Mm-hmm. If you you putting that that everything needs to be in its place it should yeah. like saying women should be in the kitchen gents should be out in the wild hunting yeah uh certain things the error it's not what is being communicated but how okay it's communicated yeah. history tradition and culture don't say women must be in the kitchen they yeah. say women were found in the kitchen men were found hunting so meaning they were compatible in a sense yeah, Jorge, what the man works hard for the woman now process it in the same effort of hardness okay therefore it's compatibility mm-hmm. but when we try to bring it in our context that are, women must be in the kitchen in a sense of trying to shy away from the hard work that mm-hmm. is there but if you look at all the processes hard work is involved yeah for a man to go out and work it's hard work on its own yeah. for a woman to stand on the stove and cook it's hard work on its own okay. so the error is not in what is communicated but how okay. what like. so yeah. you can have the most brilliant idea but if you communicate it ka arrogance rudeness level stubborn people end up misinterpreting it the same way we have one of our leaders he, he speaks his ideology is good but because of how he usually communicates things people always find them offensive mm. you know people always find his aggression uh, somehow yeah no <laughs> see i see it's obvious yeah. <laughs> Lunch what a lie. so we need to understand mm. Nora, the greatest communication is not ha- who we are but rather how we are that is how we communicate things okay you know even gare esh abrag you gonna take me serious or sympathize even your advice will be like yeah so john go to seven and so every mogul of you my friends say hey i'm free to give me so it you're gonna be like hey joe lalin now what's wrong so that's what i'm saying the error is not in much what is being said but how it's being okay. said so therefore that's where we get to misinterpret ideologies and systems that are there so with history and culture, the idea is not women must be in the kitchen, women must take care of the kids. But culture and tradition says men were out hunting, men would go out and hunting, and women would take care of kids, tender the house, make sure everything is clean in the house. Yeah. You get it. 
So the yes. whole perspective that women have now that men are providers and whatever is actually right. That's what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's actually correct. Men, men men were known to be providers. Mm. Men in their nature should be providers. The error is how we communicate that. Indo must. Our parents never went through Indo must. But mm. our parents uh, went through for a Munna Udirela Lelap. Get the difference. Munna Udirela Lelap. Indo must. Which one actually makes sense to you, gents? Munna Udirela Lelap. Because it gives you that sense of a. You are providing for your own. You are nurturing. You are taking care of your own. Marwari in doda must. Wo uto retete bo selfie. Mo bambiatla sa katello. So that's why men will shy away from in doda must and actually go and be with mona wo akalela. Yeah. Yeah. Mara kis ko? Okay, kis ko ribi a man must a provide. A man is a provider. A man is a provider. Thank you. <laughs> A man is a provider. <laughs> and yeah. then women are what? Not must. We are keepers. Keepers and nurturer. And nurturer. And incubator. That's why you give a woman a seed. She gives you something beautiful. So Harare, what do you bring to the table? You say what? I incubate. Yeah. I grow what you have. <laughs> I grow what you have. <laughs> That's, uh, so like the problem I is we ask about the table as gents, but we don't actually have seeds to bring to the Thank table. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know well, the thing is okay so women should never bring anything okay not bring anything uh they should get me with something and they should exactly. do it exactly that's why uh, when we look at the so first man yeah that's why when you look at the because they already have something that stands to amplify what you have mm -hmm. so they amplify so women have the table when as a man what do you bring to the table that's the mm. whole nature. If you mm. can look at mm. Adam and mm. Eve, mm. remember before Eve was created, Adam was given work. Okay. Yeah. Adam was given a duty to take off the garden, yeah. to you know, tender, be have something. Mm. And mm. therefore a woman was brought up and a woman was said to be a suitable helper. So yeah. meaning she was the suitable help for whatever work that Adam was doing. So even as a man, what you have, you need to find someone who's suitable. The yeah. suitable table to put the food that you have as a man. <laughs> if you have this portion of food, a woman who has this certain this big table, you'll feel like you are not providing much. But if you find a woman who has a portable table to to you know put your food, the compatibility. So Vanyana is about ninety five. No, 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 not, not in that sense. sense. Not in that sense. Not in that. I'm, 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 I'm trying to communicate it properly. I'm but he's still. <laughs> no, I get you. I get you. <laughs> I get you. I get you. So that's why, as a ma as a man, eh, if yeah. you find a woman with big expectations, and eh, when uh, you you bring a small portion, you'll feel like you're not working hard. Mm, but if you find thanks. a woman with proper expectations. Even what you bring will be seen as something amazing. Mm. That's yeah. why I believe the tycoon. They are compatible ladies like we because they can provide for those expectations. Mara nagele soetsi. Ngasi sugi kala tangwa na watu high standards. She's a gold digger. No, she has a bigger table and now I have small amount of food. But okay. whenever I find a lady who has a, a, a smaller yana table, I can bring my food and it will look like ah uh, no. You get it. So men must bring food because women have the table. I think I've answered the question. What do you bring to the table? Kopelo to the men's conference here this year. Like I am giving you the bon. I'm giving you the orders. Yeah, these are the truth that most people don't wanna admit. Yeah, I know. Even people are is gonna receive a lot of criticism. The statement I've just said. We need to be honest enough to admit the horror. Yeah. yeah, we are messing it up. Men must bring something to the table because women have the table. The difference is the sizes of the tables. Yeah, they Watala differ. Hunt. Yeah. hunt what you can kill. So what would you say changes the sizes of those tables? Uh, what changes the sizes of those tables is desire and expectations. Like, for example, uh, the appetite in a woman. Yeah. yeah, if a woman has big dreams, wants to achieve quite a lot of things, what you bring as a man must somehow be also assistance to what she wants to achieve. Mm -hmm. Because remember, she's helping you. 
So yeah. therefore, in you helping her, it's bringing enough for her to can able to go up and sustain you, help you. Okay. So if a woman has uh, just a medium appetite and you as a man, you bring too much of provision, it's going to overwhelm her. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, you need to find compatibility in that regard. That's why I normally tell people, Hore, uh, when it comes to relating, be honest enough to say, this is what I want to achieve in life. Therefore, I must find someone who's going to be compatible in me achieving that. And in the process, I can help them become that. No. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Regarding, yeah. regarding relationships now, because mm. I, I hear we're like based on it. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's come back. Mm. Um, what happens to a woman that is above the kind of person that they're with? Mm-hmm. But you're willing to like settle. You're like, I, I see so much within you and I know that you can provide to the expectations that I need you to provide in. Mm-hmm. Is it wrong for me or am I being naive as a woman to settle for a man that is below my standards but loves mm-hmm. me correctly? Love, love enough is, love alone is not enough. This is the term that I don't understand. Why isn't love alone not enough? Okay, because remember, love, love, it's a feeling, I got mm-hmm. And uh, feelings can change based on certain things that you do. True. So therefore, with that feeling being there, there are certain elements that must uh, make you decide properly, like trust, like honesty, and also what you are saying, standards. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can love you enough. But you find that your standards are way too high for me. So I should be honest enough to say, now this is too high for me. Let me go lower. It means you shouldn't bite more than what you can chew. Mm. Even as a woman, you are this big corporate lady having all your affairs in order. And therefore, if your appetite is in a loving husband, you can do well with a loving husband. But if your appetite... It's in a man who's out and about who can attend meetings with you. Then you should also go for that. Mm. Right, so, so the problem is we focus on love too much. And when love is not there, your choice to be with that person must keep you in the relationship. Yeah. Mm. Your commitment to be in that person. So meaning love is a feeling, but being in a relationship must be a choice. Mm. You must decide to say, that's why I said that I love you feeling is not enough to keep the till death do us part commitment. Yeah. Because ew, it will come with family. Mm. Will you love them? I get when or family or Rohana, how are you gonna deal with that? Mm. So it also comes with your conflict handling ethics. Or okay, wa morata. Mara bo buta hai bo pela batla kuntunyal na ba jadi French alena. How are you handling that? Yeah. Fine. Wa morata. Mara motore na anya ko balevana. And when you're family orientated, how are you gonna do that? Yeah. Are you gonna compromise or are you gonna tolerate? That's yeah. another difference people don't understand. Hore, you can compromise and you can also tolerate. Adi twa ni dilute. Ho tolerate amo tuna le certain duration or eh ke abano excited and then hota monta pela. I relax. Eva come. Mm. Mara compromising. Ke hore. Eva excited and you must be forever. So I'm compromising my peace for your excitement. Mm. Yeah. So therefore, even with the relationships, we need to understand. Hore. Ke awrata ke awrata. That's why I, I'm not uh, of the idea or people must fall in love. People must choose to be in love. Lately, I've, I've, I've been telling a lot of guys, which is something that I also did, to say, I consciously get into a relationship. Where is your future going? And then I'm like, okay, I'm now here. I'm, 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 I'm going there. Because sometimes, also it's also from a disadvantaged background. You want to be with someone who comes from a disadvantaged background. This is the honesty that most people won't tell you. Now, it means me building whatever that I'm building. Get Toma from zero or from minus million. I I need to close down the depths that I can. Now, I find someone who's coming from the same background. It means both of us are Toma from minus two million now. What a lie. It means now that both of us, we are starting from minus two million. So therefore, as a man, I'm not only having to provide for my own, but for that also deficit. Yeah. So when you find a family structure, it's somehow balanced. 
you have your work cut out for you. L let's be honest. That's why I used to disagree with guys who would say marriage is a financial decision. I used to disagree, but I've realized that actually it is. You are looking at the fact that uh, I love you, Lee, uh, content it's not enough. When you as a media person, if I create the gig, who's gonna sustain the family? Mm. Yeah. If as a woman, in the media space, the DJ I want the gig for that month. How are the kids gonna go to school? So that's why if you can look at most people that we follow, you find Hore, they are in the public space, but they have women who are handling nine to five they have you know they're in the corporate because you need to understand her when seasons change there also needs to be sustenance they need to be something in the storehouse so therefore with you choosing a person don't just go because you love someone also look at factors like family or how is your family going to receive you because <laughs> and whenever you want to have brass family gathering you find hore but you actually want but by long hore but loving but welcoming yeah so therefore not that you can have it all figured out but choose your battles mm -hmm. minimize the costs <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, I'll, I'll be doing an injustice if I leave you without uh, having to ask about the. Is it the youth? You're gonna have to assist me with yeah. the name. Uh, the foundation that you're doing. Young Minds Connect. Young Minds Connect. Yeah. I think you were having one Gottlieb Cafe. Yeah? yeah, I was having uh, what I call the Life Transformation Summit. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's that about? Okay, the Life Transformation Summit. It's actually an event where I. I raise awareness about the importance of mentorship. Yeah. That's why in all of my life transformation events, the speakers that I bring there are my mentors. Oh, yeah. People who, who counsel me, who coach me. Yeah. So therefore, what I'm trying to do is to show people that you cannot go at this life alone without having someone you consult, yeah. without having someone who advises you, you know, without having someone who says to you, our ah, flow, brother. Yeah. Atala. Because it also goes to say with the kind of wa flopa e we receiver from majita ya wa flopa compared to khrut mana ha o motse ya best ara mfana ka wa flopa it yeah. slaps different <laughs> so <laughs> with the life transformation summit i'm creating a platform whereby people get to understand hore why do you need a life coach so therefore the conversations are thought provoking okay. they give you those oh moments or tell you realize that how to go about it yeah. and it's also a platform for me to say to people i'm a life coach well yeah. versed in personal development and also relationship coaching yeah. so therefore opening up a channel for everyone who wants to have me as their life coach so from that event now i'm having 15 students by long hour i do a course here personal development every wednesday okay. so it's it's it comes from my passion of seeing people grow and develop yeah you know if you can have yourself right then anything else that you do you, you are most likely to get it right i hear you yeah i hear you so when is the next one uh okay the next one it's i do it on the first of june every year okay that is the aim that's why i also call it uh national life transformation day <laughs> because we get we engage into such conversations yeah. Uh, and also i don't like calling myself a motivational speaker i call myself a transformational speaker because oh. yeah i prefer anything that i say to be transformational uh, yeah. we've been motivated for quite a long time but <laughs> you know we are given a motive yeah. but you need to be given the right motive <laughs> yeah. uh, knowing or uh, where am i going when they say you can do it you know you can fly <laughs> high now i'm i come up at there how do you fly high do you have wings to start with mm. oh. <laughs> so that's why i in most cases i challenge many codes that people like when people say they buried you not knowing that you are a seed no you're not a seed a seed brings about a tree and a tree doesn't move a tree stays there so as a person yeah. it means you're gonna be stagnant mm. so therefore don't compare yourself with a seed you are a human use humanly examples mm. <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. Anything else on your side? On my side, just in closing, what advice would you give 
the youth like if they are feeling misplaced in life if they're feeling like they're stagnant if they're feeling that things are just not working out like me. as they thought that it <laughs> will work out yeah you know like you had dreams and goals and then like still you're at a certain age mark and then it's still not happening mm-hmm. so like what advice would you give someone in s- those kind of situations uh be patient with yourself if there's one thing my life experiences taught me Gehori, you need to be patient with yourself yeah. uh a mentor of mine uh Africa Maila, said if you want to be patient with yourself don't measure your progress ka dingwaga like first year second year measure it ka di uh 10 years oh. you know mm, yeah. look at yourself to say for the past 10 years what have i started where am i with it now like i started being a life coach 2015 next year i'm doing 10 years doing it yeah. so i need to check the progress as to say how far have i come and how far do i still need to go so therefore 2025 that's when i'm gearing up for the next level so therefore you learn to understand her seasons will change you'll meet different people who will take you uh a step further to where you want to go but if you can try to look at it with years every december every january you're going to be depressed feeling like you haven't done anything but you need to realize that you have 12 different months Mm. so therefore those 12 different months can give you the same thing that works towards what you want to do so therefore give yourself 10 years at least you know hore on a january that day on a february that day so you get to look or no january what have i what have i been up to february can regularly give to valentine it's a guy to but what i back i know what i'll have on my birthday 10 birthdays what have i done what have i received how have i improved myself so that's how you manage to say ah no i'm doing quite okay because you'll be able to realize or no man ke celebrate the birthday it's a five this year spend so you get confused so how you become patient with yourself look at yourself maybe you can even make it five years to say for the past five years what have i done how far do i still need to go then you are able to package your things well and learn what the color hey maramo I can save you for the next year. So you are able to now do things properly. Otherwise, why would so jahe more life in cause either way we're not all gonna make it alive? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, I mean <laughs> uh, thanks. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Sweats, thank yeah. you. And we are Salute. Oh, that is nice. Thank you.